meeting in order. Would everyone please rise and salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have roll call? Councilor Hartman. Here. Councilor Conley. Here. Councilor Lockwood. Here. Councilor Sprague. Here. Supervisor Lockwood. Here. Under announcements, there's no public dancing this month, and the town offices will be closed Monday, January 15th for Martin Luther King Day. And because of an error on the tax bills, the tax collector was not scheduled to sit on Saturdays, but she will sit Saturdays, Jan Saturday, January 27th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The senior and star exemption forms have been mailed and need to be returned to the assessor's office by March 1st, 2001. Welcome to our newly elected board member, Linda Lockwood and George Sprague, and newly appointed historian, George Wise, and planning board member, Chip Kyle. The first ever History of Volney Public Forum will be held January 14th, starting at 2 p.m. in the big meeting room. That's this room right here. Uh, the public is welcome. Two more forums are, are scheduled for February 11th and March 11th at 2 p.m. Okay, we'll go into committee reports, the building and code enforcement. Uh, building permits for the month of December, we issued one commercial permit, three accessory buildings, one addition for a total of five permits, collected $647 in building permit fees. Uh, under inspections, we did 30 new construction inspections, two building code, 17 zoning for a total of 49 inspections. We also issued one building code violation notice. For the year 2000, we issued 17 one and two family home permits, 26 manufactured homes, 15 commercial, 26 accessory, 23 additions, 15 pools, 10 decks, four farm buildings, and two septic systems. Total permits issued for the year were 142, and total fees collected for the year were $15,536. Under inspections, we did 310 new construction inspections. We did 24 building code, 267 zoning inspections, and six fire safety inspections for a total of 607 inspections. We issued 24 building code violation notices and 16 zoning violation notices for a total of 40. We also issued 65 certificates of occupancy and 34 certificates of compliance. Just um, one question. Something came up at the ZBA meeting last night, Dan, and just wanted to mention it. They were concerned a little bit, and I think it was a good point. We have something going on with the home occupation. Obviously, we haven't put that to bed yet, where if people register their home <coughs> occupation, they're grandfathered in regarding you know the condition of the property and everything. And it was brought up last night that in the case of, since, since it's still ongoing, <clears throat> somebody could have a situation where, let's say, at the time they registered, they had a 10-foot square sign. And, um, at some point in the future, maybe they have a 20-foot square sign and somebody complains to you and says, geez, their sign's too big. And, and their claim would be, well, we're registered, with, you know, and so we're grandfathered in. And what they were wondering, the ZBA is, I know we discussed as a board that in the future people should be bringing pictures of their property in, but do you think it might be a good idea to get pictures of the home occupations that are currently registered so we have some kind of picture of the status of that property somewhere around the time that they registered as their home occupation? We can, um, although actually the way it's turned out, at this point I haven't done anything further with it because the whole thing's up in the air. But we do have several that have registered. Right. So that actually, as it turns out, they weren't required because I thought the whole thing was put to bed and you were all set. 
and now it's not. I mean, yeah, I can go out and take pictures of ones that are registered, but technically we don't have any guidelines set out yet. Well, that's what we're doing. We're trying to, I think, you know, we were doing, in fact, I think they're pretty much done. They have to be voted on. We need to nail the guidelines down, but we, the registration process is in place. And that there, there was a fear, I know they mentioned it last night, that you know somebody could come in at some later point, claim that they were grandfathered in, but actually change the property from the time they register. And that's why they thought the picture process might be good. It's good if we have the time. I'm only one person working part time, and as you can see from the number of inspections we did, uh, I'm pretty busy. Well, that's true. I think it would be more work in the future, though, if we don't do something to try to, at least, you know, over a period of time when you're out on the road or something, maybe get a picture or something just so we have some kind of record on the, on the ones. And I don't think there's that many that are registered uh, at this well, point. There's 35 of them so far. That's good. <coughs> there's a lot that aren't yet, so. What are the restrictions? When they go to register, can't they bring a picture in? I would think they could. That way save you from running out there. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't mind doing it, but you're generating a lot more work all the way down the road with this program, and that's something you're going to have to realize as a board that, you know, two years from now, now i got to start chasing everybody to get them to renew their permits. I rather doubt that there's going to be very many of them that will come in voluntarily when they notice that the data on their permit is up, which means two years from now, when they register, now we got to start chasing all these people down in, in addition to everything else that we're, we're doing. Well, I think in the long run, I think it's going to be a good program. I mean, when we first, you know, uh, I think on the dog licensing issue, that's generated a lot of work. But in the long run, I think it's working out in that people are becoming more aware of the process. Uh, there's income being generated. I think, like George said, and I think it was discussed in the meeting, as people register now, we should be requiring a picture up front, which will save you that hassle. But for the first 35 or so, I think it would be, you know, if we're going to make this program work, and, you know, I'm sure it's going to take some refining, but if we're going to make this work and get what we've tried to do in the first place out of it, we do need some kind of record of those initial first groups that registered, you know, so we know what the status of their property was at the time of the registration. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think we also discussed at the time that all the registrations were going to come due at the same time. And that way the computer could just kick out the registrations. And that way you could send it out, you know, two, three weeks prior to the registration becoming new. And that way it'd be, a, uh, you know, orderly. It wouldn't be, a, it would take a lot of the weight on you. Dog control? December year 2000. 60 total number of calls received, 8 total number of dogs housed at kennel this month, 4 total number of dogs at kennel this meeting date, 4 total number of dogs adopted, uh, zero, do 0 dogs redeemed, 0 dogs euthanized, euthanized, nice, total number 2 for the total number of dogs reported lost. Two total number of dog bites reported, 283 total miles uh, traveled this month, repairs to the kennel none, and Leonard wrote that all the doors need to be replaced when I can find out where to get them. Leonard. Highway. Uh, expenses for December 2000. Supplies and maintenance, uh, bill submitted 12-28-2000 uh, for the special meeting. $4,408.21. Uh, bills to be paid after this meeting, $8,175.53. Uh, payroll for the month of December, $27,466.70. For total expenses, $40,050.44. Be reimbursed from the county for plowing the roads, $35,629.70. Payroll hours as follows. 680.8 hours machinery repair, 1,568 hours plowing and sanding, for a total of 2,248.8 hours. For the month of December, we used 347 gallons of gas, 4,988 gallons of diesel fuel. 
For the year 2000, we used uh, 3,063.9 gallons of gas, 27,631.1 gallons of diesel fuel. At this time, we have eight full-time employees, four part-time as needed. We have uh, five 10-wheeler plows used for plowing and sanding, and one pickup. We also have one 10-wheeler plow uh, for backup. A historian. <coughs> it says, I'm unable to attend this, this evening's town board meeting. I, I report that I am working on the history of Volney Forum for this in the, the next two months. Also, I'm trying to, to gain the 16th Cemetery lot books and maps, as well as seeking to get uh, Bristol Hill Church on the historical registry of history, historic places, and that's respectively George Wise. Recreation? Um, I finally finished all the paperwork for the year 2000 that's been given to Barb to be mailed out to the county. Um, I'm currently working on the plans for January, February, March, and April, and as soon as I get them printed up and copied, I'll get them over to the school. Planning? The uh, planning board meeting was held on January 3rd, 2001. There was actually four uh, items that were discussed. Uh, Dave Victory subdivision was discussed and a letter from the Sugar County Planning was read <coughs> and the director of the planning community development had determined that no significant county impact was involved. Therefore, it should be handled as a local issue. Therefore, the board decided to hold off on the approval or denial so Mr. Vickery could attend the February meeting to answer some questions. He wasn't uh, at the January meeting. And some of the board members, uh, such as myself, who's new on the board, would have an opportunity to uh, review all the information. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Arnold King came to the meeting to uh, request a split division, subdivision of their property located at 3476 County, Route 45, Oswego, New York. The property consisted of 51.6 acres, and the Kings were asking for a, a single split of 25 acres for resale purposes. After discussion of the subdivision, review of a short environmental assessment form, uh, SEQR was discussed on this parcel and it was found to be an unlisted action with no negative environmental impact. A motion was made, seconded, and the subdivision was passed unanimously. Also, what was put out was the 2001 Annual Municipal Training Program Notice and Reservations Forum that's going to be held on January 31st of this month at Drumlins. Um, it, it was recommended to the members to have the reservations if they decide to go to this training program into the town clerk at least one week uh, prior to the actual training days. And Shirley Bench was uh, nominated to be the chairman for the year 2001. These are being submitted by Shirley. Do we have anything on solid waste? Yeah, I got something over here. Um, this is dated December 7th. Mark Liechtenstein said that the hearing regarding the JWJ transfer, I think that's a transfer station in New Haven that's generating some controversy right now, will be held within the next few weeks and mentioned several reasons why it will create serious problems for the solid waste system if it opens. Since it plans to charge $30 to $35 a ton and the county charges $50 per ton, the local haulers will undoubtedly use this business instead of the county to save money. Leachenstein said that this loss of business could cost the division of solid waste $800,000 to $1 million. He also mentioned that our fixed cost for, for the services provided would stay the same, $50 to $70 million, as the services such as sanitation would still be needed. An example to compare the effect of the new business was given. The Oswego Transfer Station, which is the busiest county facility, deals with approximately 80 tons daily, and the JWJ plans to deal with 100 tons daily. The question of whether this meant that the county would close the Oswego Station was brought up. Since it would be the haulers that would use the JWJ, it would not make sense to close any of the transfer stations. A discussion about the state wanting to force the recycling laws on haulers followed. Leachenstein sta stated that he will keep the board members informed about any changes with this issue. The budget for 2001, Leachenstein announced that the department budget was passed by the legislature 
The only change that will affect DSW programs is that residents will now be asked to pay a fee of $10 per refrigeration appliance brought to a transfer station. This is the cost that the county has had to pay to have Freon in those appliances removed. This process is a DEC requirement. The concern about the fee possibly causing more illegal roadside dumping was discussed. Liechtenstein stated that DEC will certainly be tightening the study of illegal dump sites. He also mentioned that paying for three hazardous waste collection events in the spring and summer is included in the budget. Regarding the Silk Road landfill project, Paul Dutton reported that most of the Silk Road landfill cleanup project has been accomplished very well. The cover will be put on when the weather allows it. The landfill has been closed since 1983, but it has taken a long time to get it addressed, and testing will continue to occur over the next 30 years. Dutton stated that when tests regarding contaminants were done, none appeared, nor did any chromium, and only a low quantity of hydrocarbons showed up. He also mentioned that the closed landfill near the Oswego Transfer Station will be involved in a closure project in the near future, and that the money to cover it has been set aside. Don Maury, Maury stated that his highway employees have done a great, a great job on this project, and that 75% of the overtime will be reimbursed by the state. He also stated that the county saved approximately $3 million by doing much of the work with its own workers, opposed to, rather than hiring a company to cover the work. That's it. Zoning? <clears throat> I haven't heard anything about zoning. Uh, how you were at the meeting, right? Right. And you were well, um, I thought she said she was going to have a report here tonight. No. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see her. I didn't hear her. Old business. Um, one thing I did at, at the meeting last night, um, Dennis, I spoke to uh, Jennifer Parrish, who uh, did the update for our, our zoning laws, and I thought she, she did a great job on that. And I asked her about the possibility, if, if she was interested in possibly assisting in looking into the grant application or future grant applications, or particularly the grant application for that property over by the river mm -hmm. that was put in a couple years ago. And uh, she said she'd be very interested. And I asked her if she could put together some type of proposal for the, t for the town board to look at. And, um, and she said she would. And uh, in addition, I did speak to a gentleman that I know very well who was um, who I either wrote up or played a big role in putting together the, uh, the grant application for the city of Phoenix or the village of Phoenix. And uh, he said he would be uh, willing to sit down with us and uh, provide any assistance. So um, unless the board objects, we'll see what Jennifer has to say. And uh, I think she would be a good choice and possibly reviewing the grant that we put together in the past, seeing if it can be revised, and uh, seeing if we can put something together to resubmit. Okay. Any new business? I think that's still part of it. I know we discussed that, brought that up at our meeting. Why right, we discuss that on Tuesday. Any petitions tonight? Okay, we'll go into our resolutions. Resolution 2001-41, approval of minutes. Move to approve without reading aloud the regular meeting minutes of December 14, 2000, the special meeting minutes of December 28, 2000, and the organizational meeting minutes of January 1, 2001 have been distributed to the board previously for review. I'll move it. We'll second it. Mr. Hartred? Yes. Mr. Connolly? Yes. Mr. Lockwood? Yes. Mr. Sprague? Yes. Supervisor Lockwood? Yes. Motion is carried 5-2. Mr. Supervisor, before I go on with the, the next resolution here, I'd like to ask you a question here. It says in the, in the um, agenda that the uh, discussion, the public is invited to comment before the vote. 
do we give them a chance? If they raise their hand. Okay. So if they raise we their hand. We look out there. <laughs> okay. I did. I just. I'm the new kid here, and I just wanted to know what the procedure was. Okay. The next resolution, and I, and I know this is all boilerplate, but it, just for future reference for myself. Resolution number 2001-42, payment of vouchers. Move the authorized as supervisor to instruct the bookkeeper to pay the following vouchers. Number one through 12 from the general fund in the amount of $4,017.54. Voucher one through 15, highway fund in the amount of $8,175.53. And number one, Seneca Hill water in the amount of $4,442.50 as shown on abstract number one for 2001. I'll move it. I'll second it. Mr. Hartray? Yes. Mr. Conley? Yes. Mr. Lockwood? Yes. Mr. Sprague? Yes. Supervisor? Yes. Motion is carried. Resolution 2001-43, Planning Board Chairperson Appointment. Move to appoint Shirley Vinch as Chairperson of the Planning Board for the year 2001. Is that correct on the term to expire? For chairperson. Oh, that's right, as chairperson. Term to expire, 1231-2001. I'll move it. I'll second it. Mr. Hartray? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lockwood? Yes. Mr. Sprague? Yes. Supervisor? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay, we're going to public comments. Yes. I'll start off. Hey, uh, anybody gets a tax bill on Saturday. On Saturdays, and we always, in the past, we always paid, come over here and pay them on Saturday morning. They clock government up because I come out Saturday and go over here and see her. But I didn't read the thing because it's always been Saturday morning for the month of January. We just get the person a raise, and it seems like every time we get people raises, the services go down. Even the stamps are not a penny, and that service goes down. And that, they don't talk. I call it out of towns in the county and come to find out the three highest paid towns, uh, they don't have Saturday or evening hours any time during the week. The poorest paid people in the town, different towns, promo, handle like that, they're over on Thursdays nights for people and Saturday on uh, mornings for people to pay their taxes. Uh, I should have mailed it, I could mail it in, but like I said, uh, I can't ask to, to stamp a question uh, they mailed out these things on Friday. Everybody in the area got them on Saturday. I'm special. Mine was opened by somebody, mailed to me by a tax collector in a separate envelope. I want to ask the tax collector who opened my taxes. They want to know what I want to pay for taxes. They called me up and asked me. I'll tell them how much I'm assessed for something like that. So I, you know, now I got to wait until this must be the results of calling Kevin on Saturday. She's going to be here on the 27th. I wonder if we have a major snowstorm. And uh, in the tank, you didn't have that. She's here evening too, though. When? Just about what, every Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. She's been yeah, posted there. Yeah, and I didn't have an article of paper. It's not in the tax oh, form. I know your envelope was opened. I don't know. I know there were some errors in some of those. Was that one that was in an envelope and it had to be redone? And why, I had no idea why it went, somebody else opened it. Thanks, I don't know. I can't ask for it. It's funny. She's going to be open. What happens there Saturday if uh, there's a storm or something? Things closed up. There's still three Saturdays left this month. Well, I'm sure. Really? If they want to work, don't want to work six days. We take a Wednesday off and come in on Saturday morning for four hours. I don't. Know. Well, the law actually reads she only has to collect in three days a week, and yeah. she's been here five days a week right now. <coughs> Anyone else? Future meetings are January 23rd. It's a citizens' water advisory. That's at 7 p.m. February 6th is our next bill signing agenda and preparation. February 7th is the next planning board meeting, and that's at 7 p.m. Our next regular town board meeting is February 8th. February 14th is our zoning board meeting at 7 p.m. And February 20th is the next set, would be another citizen's advisory, and that's at 7 p.m. Dennis? 
should we consider, because uh, Dan did bring out a good point, and I think we got it, we had it pretty much down, should we consider maybe getting a zoning update meeting scheduled so that if, if maybe some of the areas that we've already got pretty much cleared up, we can finalize them and maybe get, get that matter put to bed. I was thinking, if, if it's good for you, the planning board is already going to be there on Wednesday the 7th. Maybe we can start before the planning board meeting or something or tie it in or whatever you think, but at least that way we know we'll have planning board members at the meeting and uh, uh, what's the board think? What's, you know, because we did put a, finalize a lot of stuff so we can at least take care of that stuff. If nothing else. I think that home occupation was one of the areas we did finalize. Close. But when they be realizing when they go into their meeting, though, that we lose our secretary too. One of us will. <laughs> I, I, mean, I was wondering if we had it like at 6:15 or something. I don't know. I thought we had planned it for the February 23rd or something, didn't we? When we had to cancel that one. The zoning update. Yeah. I thought we were going to not do it until the end of February. I thought we had already set a date. That's a lot of advisory. Oh, that's January. Well, I know we passed. It would be a short meeting, and one of us wouldn't have a yeah. secretary when we plan the other meeting. Well, I know we passed resolutions on several issues. Um, I think, you know, regarding that home occupation. And if nothing else, if we looked that over and said, gee, what, why don't we take what we got so far, maybe have a, you know, set up, have a shorter meeting, say, hey, this is what we got so far, decide on whether we want to have a public hearing and put that to bed and maybe determine some issues that we want to do, like signs. Uh, I was at the ZBA and signs are just a major problem. They're just having a lot of problems trying to interpret the signs. And I'm sure Dan agrees it's something we just need to get, we really need to get a handle on. Um, it's coming up every month, so maybe the latter part of February, if not the early part of February. When's it convenient to set it up? I just think that particular, the same night that they're meeting, I think that's the same right. night that the planning board meeting or the zoning board is meeting, right. okay. we lose our, we use the same temperature. <coughs> yeah, that's true. Wednesday the 21st, there's no Z, the ZBA and planning have already met at that point. I don't think so. No. So Wednesday. Well, we can have it. Are we in February? That would be in February. We can have it. To, I was thinking the 31st, but that that's the, night, the day of the uh, classes that they have over at um, in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be doing dancing here on the 21st. Well, we wouldn't be using this one. We just went through that once before. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do it the, the 7th, the day of our bill signing, try to get our bill signing ahead, see if planning board or whatever can be here at 8 o'clock. The 6th? You mean the 6th? That would be fine. The 6th. And then we can get them all out of, out of you know, we'll mm -hmm. start at 8 o'clock and they can't go any later than 10 or 9.30 and we'll get it done in one night. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're usually done with the bill signing by a little after 7. Unless we, there's we a get discussion about yeah, a resolution or something major comes up, but if not, we can be done early, go right into the zoning update and have, it, have uh, some discussion on the regular board meeting that Thursday. Can we start the bill signing at 6? I'll, I can probably, I'll do the best I can to do there. Uh, it'll be between 6 or 6.30, I can get that. And then if we have some preparation for the agenda like that, we still have a half hour. We'll so have the last time to be here at 7.30. Okay. Right. That's when we meet. I think that'd be a good idea. We'll be done by 9 or so. Nine -ish. So, so what do you want to do? That's fine with me. You know, I'll tell everybody I lied to you about the global <coughs> sending agenda. It's at 6, not 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> Could we put a notice, like, I don't know, in your envelopes with their checks or something? Can we put a notice 
in their in their envelopes or, or whatever you feel would be a good way to make sure they see it advising them of the meeting and asking them to please attend that's the day It'll be Tuesday the 6th. Right? So they all have two meetings in a row. Oh. I'm not sure they'll be too happy about that. Well, they haven't been to the last three, so I haven't two in a row. I shouldn't bother them. Geez, I remember when we used to have two meetings in a month and missed it. Make a motion. We adjourn. I'll second it. Yes. 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 Yes.